Trading forum. You know, new polls of the general electric and uh, electorate in three swing states out this morning. Donald Trump unpopular in all of them. Trump has negative ratings of almost two to one in Iowa, Virginia, and Colorado, but there's more to it than that. Because former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's numbers in those same states are not much better, only in Virginia are her mm. approval ratings significantly higher than Trump's. Wow. Wait, wait, that, that's among the general electorate. Hillary Clinton is yeah. upside down by 23 points in Iowa? I think we kind of missed a lead here. Hillary is upside down by 23 in Iowa. She's upside down by 9 in Virginia, which she has to win. She's upside down by 23 in Colorado. And Mika, I think we Whoa. just, in that one snapshot, has shown... And I'm sure Jeb Bush's isn't much better. Why somebody out of, I was going to say left field, he's, he's not left field or right field, why somebody like Donald Trump attacking politicians is actually getting support. Those, those numbers, I, I think you're right. I think we did bury the lead. I think if we everybody the lead. is saying that Hillary, that, that Donald Trump is never going to get the nomination, and everybody thinks Hillary Clinton is going to get the nomination. Put those numbers up again. Oh, well, we'll put them up again. Those numbers. Uh, Jonathan has something to say, and then I've got the the latest Q polls head to head. Real quick, Jonathan. Wait, the put Washington the numbers Post up? Polled let's, yesterday. Let's bring showed, in Chuck Todd as well. Okay. But the Washington Post poll yesterday showed that 62 percent of those surveyed said that they would never vote for Donald Trump for president. Okay. So I mean, right. we have to okay, we have to throw that we have to throw that into the into the conversation but, when we're talking about the unfavorable numbers. The story here of, is about Hillary, and that, I mean, that's what we're a little bit, um, Chuck Todd is with us as well. So, but, yeah, and Mika, yeah, and Mika, so yes, let us assume that yeah. everybody around the table is right, uh, that, that all of our guests this morning are right, and that Donald Trump is never going to be relevant. So let's assume that. Let's say you guys okay. are all right. It doesn't matter what, the, what, what people say. Uh, about about Donald Trump. What matters is you look at these polls. If everybody around the table says Hillary's going to be the Democratic nominee, what Chuck Todd? If Chuck's there, Chuck, what what does the Democratic Party do about numbers like this in Iowa, Virginia, and and other other important swing states, Colorado, for God's sake? Joe, I was just having this conversation with our own staff yesterday. If it wasn't for Donald Trump, the biggest story of the summer would be Hillary Clinton's problems uh, solidifying herself inside the Democratic Party. It would be the, really. The, it would be the Bernie Sanders boomlet. It would be this issue of, you know, Look what we're this. seeing here. I think is both parties are seeing its populist base flex its muscles in different ways. Trump is tapping into it. I kind of think we need to move on from Trump, the personality, and mm -hmm. focus more on the people that are attracted to Trump. That is an important story. We can, you know, look, we've all tried to sit there people? and be, uh, it's people that have felt marginalized by a lot of things, Joe. They have felt marginalized by this economy. They have felt marginalized by the political establishment. They have felt marginalized by the media. So guess what? When we marginalize Donald Trump, yeah. they sit there and say, yeah, just like me. Right. And yeah. in an odd right. way, it, it helps them. Going back to Hillary Clinton, look, it, 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 this also fits another pattern of hers. Whenever she's been out front as the face of the Democratic Party, her numbers have gone down. Yeah. They always have. Whenever she has been the focal point. When she has why, been... Why is that, Chuck? Uh, she does, well, uh, the, you could just simply say she doesn't wear well. Yeah. You know, when she was numbered, when, when Bill Clinton was the face, and sh she would see her numbers go up as sort of a supportive spouse or a victim. When Barack Obama was president and she was Secretary of State, she was uh, praised and, and viewed nicely by the public as sort of uh, an operator that didn't embarrass the country, you know, as Secretary of State and, you know, stayed above the fray. Whenever she has been front and center, Canada in 07, Barack Obama so, surpasses her, and here she is again. So let's look at, at exactly those three critical swing states. Clinton loses across the board to Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. Florida Senator Marco Rubio and former Governor Jeb Bush. Clinton performs worse. Okay, what, 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 what's happened? What, what, Mika, what's happened in this short period of time well, that what's yeah. happened? 
I'm not done. Clinton performs worst in Iowa and Colorado, where she is down by sizable margins. Scott Walker performs best of the three candidates matched against her. And in Virginia, Clinton keeps the margins closer, but is still trailing. Shockingly, the poll finds Bernie Sanders performing nearly as well as Clinton and even better against Jeb Bush in Iowa and Colorado to Chuck's point, Joe. Yeah, you know, Mika, what, what I've, I've always told people that if, following up on a David Brooks column I saw a couple months ago and everybody was talking about, oh, the presidential races are always going to go Democratic because of demographics, David Brooks wrote a great article saying, well, no, it's actually a toss-up. And then I started looking at the Electoral College, and, and Chuck, I guess I'll go to, to you on this one. I say, if you consider Mitt Romney the low point of the Republican Party, take all the states that Mitt Romney won. Put those in the Republican camp, because Republicans are probably going to win those after eight years of a Democratic president. And then you just add Florida, Virginia, and Ohio, and suddenly you've got Republicans three, three uh, electoral votes away from winning the White House. And that's where states like Colorado come in. That's where states like New Mexico come in. It's just, it's Democratic strategists have to be looking at these numbers. And I guess you're right. Thanking God for Donald Trump right now. Well, no, it is. And look, you, you brought up, there are two ways to look at your map you just brought up, Joe. That is amazing, by the way, that you could carry all the Mitt Romney states and a Republican could carry Florida, Ohio, and Virginia and still not get to 270. Let's think about that a minute. That that is that shows you why there is right now an electoral college advantage for the Democrats simply because of of of, of some of those states that have gone five six times in a row. But to your point, to your larger point here about Colorado and Iowa, you know, four years ago, Obama's numbers in Colorado and Iowa were worse there than in any of the other swing states in the summer before the campaign started. He eventually improved those. Um, now, is that Barack Obama coalition that figured that out? Is that Mitt Romney that lost Iowa uh, and lost Colorado rather than, than Obama won them? I don't know, but I, I would just throw that out there as a just a cautionary note that, that I think Colorado and Iowa are very um, unstable swing states, meaning I think they're very volatile and, and, and could go either way.